Hey guys, Jodie here from Jodie Flavel Art and welcome to my channel. I was really high pitched for some reason. So today I have these, these uh, this filing cabinet here. Um, I've always wanted to make one over but never had the opportunity. So today I'm going to be doing something with this. I'm going to be doing a very vintage, rustic, old worldy style. That's kind of my plan. Um, but that's as far as it goes right now. I'm thinking maybe some olive colours on this one. So I'm going to get started with Dixie Belle Slick Stick, which is an adhesive primer because this is really, really smooth. I want to make sure that my paint is going to, you know, stick nicely to it. Um, so I'm going to put this on first, which will ensure that my paint has a nice foundation to stick to. So this is going to take two coats of Slick Stick. I'm going to put on two thin coats and also leave plenty of time for, for it to dry before you go in um, with the second. So I have got the scarlet brush, normally I would use a chip brush but because this is so slick, um, I don't know, I just wanted to be sure that I got some really good coverage on it and the scarlet brush is really good for getting into little areas like this so I thought no, no, maybe this one's for the best. Um, and I wanted like a smooth finish as well, which is what synthetic bristles will give you. So once that's dry, your first coat, you can go in with your second coat. And again, just go easy with the um, amount of primer that you put up on your brush and go easy with how many brush strokes that you do as well. So. You can always go in there and add more if you do it slowly, but it's so much harder to fix things if you go in there with too much paint all at once or, you know, you try and overwork it all at once as well. So just relax and take it easy and take your time. I've got my primer on now. It's all primed. It's ready to go. And I'm going to now put a base of Gravel Road on. It's quite an old old part but it's a grey colour with a slight I'm going to say it's a slight olive tinge to it um, so this is going to be my base I'm going to just it doesn't really matter what brush you use if you're wanting texture you can use the natural bristle one if not you can use a synthetic one like this um, the reason I'm using this is because I always use chip brushes and I just I fancy a change really <laughs> that's it so I'm going to go in with this and some gravel road and I'll go in different directions um, and make sure that I get different textures going on. This is how you do it exact like like this. a lot of sun happening right now so if I look like a ghost then and I'm squinting like where are you <laughs> it's, it's because the window's right there and the sun's decided to anyway um so I've put two coats of the um what color was it gravel road Just let me double check yes gravel road I've put two coats of gravel road on here now um and I'm going to go in with two more colors I have English Ivy, which is a lovely green, and also Pinecone, which is quite an orangey brown. I have two brushes, so I'm going to be, they're both round, I'm going to be using the oval medium for the green colour and the round small for the um, Pinecone. And I'm kind of going to dab them on and mix them up. And I'm just going to have a play and see what happens. Had a little play just to see what it's looking like. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm just tapping on a lot of green. This is going to be my main colour. Sorry, just not the camera there. <laughs> and then I'm going to tap on a little bit of the pine cone over the top. But mostly I want the green. <laughs> oh no, I'm losing, I'm losing bristles. Mostly I want the green, so then I'm going to go back in with my green brush. This is really harsh on your bristles, by the way. Um, and just start tapping that in. So it just has this kind of, I want a faded look rather than, you know, a full-on 
camo, army camo look. Trying something. I'm gonna put dab on a bit of green here like this, very roughly. And then I'm going to get some of my pine cone and all these small brush bristles that I can never ever grab. Ah, oh, this is why I never have very good nails. Mm -hmm. Then I've got some, this is just an old scrap piece of decoupage paper, but so you can use kitchen towel, a rag or newspaper for this if you want to. I'm just going to scrunch it up and then just pad it on there like that and then pull it off and hopefully we'll start to see some of the um, texture happening underneath and it'll just make it look a little bit more aged and I think it does so I'm going to carry on doing that now for the rest of the drawers. like industrial look going on now you can see lots of different things happening I'm gonna do more things um, and I have some cucumber ice which is a white with a bit of a creamy like quite a yellow base to it actually it's quite a lot of yellow in there just got a scratchy chip brush and I'm just gonna start painting this um, very subtly not subtly not subtly is not the right word very um, <laughs> carefully and slowly around some of the edges so again i'm just going to be building this up gradually and the reason why i've got this old chip brush is it's quite hard actually it's dried out a little bit and it's just going to be a bit scratchy which is what i like okay <laughs> i decided that's too white so i am now I'm going to go back to the drawing board and mix that with some yellow, I think, and make it a little bit more yellow because it just it's a little bit harsh. It just needs something just softer to warm it up a little bit. OK, so I totally forgot about this colour. I sometimes like forget about certain colours because Dixie Belle's got lots of amazing ones to choose from. And, and and then like you can see the pot is old and some just get thrown to the back of the cupboard and I forget about them. Anyway, so I'm not doing any mixing. This is, um, if I can get it open, because it's old. This is lemonade and you can see it's quite a yellow colour. So um, I'm going to just put a little bit of this on here and see what happens and how it feels. Um, I still think I wanted more yellow. <laughs> Um, hold, hold that thought. Hey guys, <clears throat> it's another day and um, I'm sat in um, my kitchen so I've brought this project home with me and I've left it a few days so don't ever be afraid guys if a project's not going well don't ever be afraid to take a step back and change course if you have to which is what I'm going to do. So I wasn't actually happy with these, this green completely with with the colour that I use, I think it's putty, um, because I felt like it just it was just looking a little bit camo, like it was looking a bit army man to me. <laughs> so I'm gonna try. I'm not gonna totally cover it up, but I'm gonna go over the top with more of the kind of colour I think I want, which is um, an olive colour. So I'm gonna go and, sh and see what holy guacamole looks like, um, and then I'm gonna take it from there, and we'll see because I'm just kind of playing now at this point. I'm going to spray a fair amount of water on this, just over the top like that. The slick stick should be nice and dry now and the paint slightly, and, and sorry, the paint cured enough that not, none of it will react. Um, I've got a little tub of holy guacamole here and I'm using the, the Big Daddy brush. I'm just going to tap a little bit in there. I'm just gonna tap a little bit over the top like this and just see what it gives me really. I also have, um, a, well this is just a Dixie Bell applicator pad but you can choose a sponge if you want to. Um, I'm just got, I've just got this to hand and I'm just gonna tap it as well. 
just gonna have a play really and see what happens. tiny bit wet but can you kind of see what I got going on here now <laughs> um, I also now have a French tip brush and I have some chocolate so while it's still a little bit wet I am just going to dip a little bit of chocolate onto my brush um, I'm just gonna kind of wet it slightly and then just softly go around these edges like this I have my um, sponge to hand again. I'm just going to use the same one. And I'm just going to tap that in like this. Look with it and just pat more of this chocolate in. I appreciate the light isn't great. It's a little bit sh it's shining. It's a little bit too shiny. Um, but I will show you the outcome afterwards but just know this is kind of this is kind of what I'm doing and I'm just going to bring some of it into the actual drawer as well. It will be much softer once um, the right lights on it but as you can see I'm crammed in my kitchen right now and I've got a light there and it's only a little kitchen and I am trying to work in here today. Right so next up I'm going to pour in just a little bit of cobblestone a tiny little bit of cotton they've gone a bit watery because I've not touched them for a while um, it's fine. I don't have any yellow with me right now, so I'm actually going to add a little bit of this uh, daffodil colour from um, from the Terra Paint range. Sorry, I don't mean I have any yellow um, chalk mineral paints. I'm just going to add a little bit of Terra to that. It it's fine to mix clay and chalk paints together. So I'm just going to give that a stir and see what comes out of it. I want it quite light. Let's have a look. Okay. So this is the colour, I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to take an old paint scraper, put a tiny little bit on there, and then just do a little bit of scraping. If you want it a little bit thinner, you can just add, you know, spray a little bit of water, water it down a little bit, and then just pull it out a little bit. Okay, because I can't seem to stop, I've now got some copper patina paint. Um, I'm not going to actually spray it with a patina spray, but because this is still a little bit damp, it might cause it to um, patina a little bit, we'll see. Um, but I'm just going to start popping this just in some areas, just to give it that metallic look, you know, that metallic look that's worn off a little. Patting it in with my chip brush, like that. Again, you can always go in with a rag or your newspaper, whatever you've got to hand, and just give it a tap. Like that. <laughs> just remember it's a little bit harsh right now because um, of, of the light. I'm just gonna add some clear wax to all of this. It is pretty much dry. It is dry, it's not pretty much dry. It is dry, I've just dried it. Okay, so I'll start with this uh, top drawer first. Let's get a good base of clear wax on there. Then I'm going in with some, some black wax. Just try a little bit of black around these edges because there's a lot of brown in this. So I think some black might just kind of balance it out a bit. But I'm probably... Um, I'm going to go in with a bit of brown as well. I'm just going to, you can blend waxes in case you didn't know that. <laughs> so 
so we'll just put a little bit of black in some areas get it looking really grubby and old like just mainly around the edges like that okay and then I have some brown wax that I'm also just going to start putting in some areas so I'm just going to kind of place where I might want it and then just start blending it in so the reason why it's great to have um, clear wax underneath is because it then allows you to um, so the clear wax acts as a foundation so you can then blend darker waxes on top um, and remove them if you need to rather than letting the dark waxes sink straight in so I'm not going to be scared of this brown wax I want it quite as I say quite old and rustic and grungy mm -hmm. 